Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. Rebuilding a 3-inch scale Garrett traction engine, part 6. Any viewers watching who are really into traction engines will know that this is called a Garrett DCC tractor, or a double crank compound tractor. One of the problems that I have with this traction engine is that I didn't dismantle it, so I don't really know where all the parts go, I'm working from photographs, I don't have a drawing. When I refitted the main bearing for the water pump drive, I felt it could do with some more support on the inside of the frame. But then, I didn't realise that this had to fit on it, so I've removed the plate, and the good news is, once I cut down the part that I made, it's still going to fit in place later on. But the first thing to fit is the pressure gauge, and this is clamped in position on this shaped green part. I'm sure that the correct name for this component is not just a shaped green part, but I'm not very familiar with traction engine terminology, so that's all I can refer to it as. But looking at the photographs, quite a lot of bits fit to this shaped green part. And here I'm taking no chances, I'm tightening the pressure gauge union before I bolt the green part in position. And once this part is in position, suddenly the space in certain areas of the traction engine is very restricted. What I'm doing in this clip is shortening some 4BA bolts. I'm doing this because the original bolts that held the part in position were not in very good condition. Here's a top tip, whenever you shorten bolts, put a nut on the bolt first, then hold the bolt by the part you're going to cut off, then trim it to the correct length using a hacksaw. And the good thing about doing it this way also is, the piece of thread that is left in the vise is a template for the position you need to put the bolt in to cut the next one, and so on and so forth. Common sense I know, but I just thought I'd mention this. Another good tip is when you buy your supply of BA bolts, and these are of course 4 BA bolts, always buy them longer than you generally need. Because as shown here, they're quite easy to shorten, but if you are shortening a lot of bolts, it's best to make a jig. And a very simple jig for shortening small BA bolts would be a piece of gauge plate that you can harden later, and all you do is drill some holes in it, thread these holes different BA sizes, then once the plate's been heat treated to harden it, all you do is screw your 4BA bolt or whatever size BA bolt you're using into the hole to the length you want it and using a sharp chisel and a hammer, just simply chisel off the end of the bolts. Simple and effective, but not worth making if you're only going to shorten six bolts. This is not a small traction engine. This is a three inch scale traction engine. So that's three inches to the foot relative to the full size. But the way it goes together is incredibly fiddly and getting more fiddly by the minute. This clip shows the bearing support plate that I made, and as you can see, I've cut it down so it fits hard up against the green metal part. And there's not much space to manoeuvre in here. I can't wait to put the eccentric strap back on. Some of the jobs on these working miniatures can be very frustrating, and the best advice I can give you is if at first you don't succeed, just don't bother, just go to the pub. I'm about to fit the gear wheel which drives the water pump, and as usual, I always oil things before I assemble them. At least that way, you don't forget to oil the engine, because if you run the engine with dry bearings, that would not be good. Dave, who works at the steam workshop, seems to do most of the painting, so I asked him if he'd just mix me up a bit of two-pack paint, so I could touch in the paint and the bearing top caps. Minor damage to the paintwork is inevitable when assembling a model like this. In this clip I'm fitting a retainer that holds the key in place and stops the water pump drive gear from flying off the end of the shaft when it's running. It is very important when working on miniature steam engines as opposed to the full size that you do not put too much pressure on the bolts. Otherwise they will shear off and then you have to do a repair job. And I've seen this done many many times by people who are used to working on large machinery and suddenly find themselves working on smaller machinery and sometimes carnage ensues until they get used to this smaller size. This gear slides up and down on this shaft so you can engage and disengage it from the crankshaft, which is a good idea because you don't need the water pump going all the time. This has a handle with a fork that moves the gear back and forth, and in this clip I'm bolting the handle in position. Moving to the other side of the engine, it's time to assemble the gear selectors. There are two gear selectors, one for the high speed gear and one for the low speed gear. 
It's crude, it's simple, but it works. And yes, you've guessed it, I used to have a girlfriend like that. What I'm doing at the moment in this clip is just checking that the gears are in the right position on the square part of the crankshaft and that they slide from side to side easily. And once I've made sure of this, I can put the selectors in place. A couple of washers and a split pin hold these in place onto the main pins. After fitting the selectors, and I almost forgot, I fitted the regulator too, and the engine now looks like this. The fitting on top of the green piece of metal is the regulator handle, and this has a rod that connects to the regulator itself, which is in the steam chest. And the rod that's below it is like a little push button, and this operates a special valve that's fitted to the cylinder block, and this valve is called a simpling valve. More about that in a future episode. Outside the steam workshop, Dave and John are testing an engine. And this one has a steam operated pump on it. And at the moment the engine is in steam and the pump is pumping water into the boiler. And as you can see here, it's also leaking. This is a real problem with small pumps. The first steam that gets to the pump condenses to water and they don't have drain cocks. And even if they did, how do you operate the drain cocks without a lot of complexity? I frequently find that most of the steam pumps I work with, particularly the smaller ones, have a bit of a steam leak. But on these small steam pumps, I generally live with a bit of a leak. And in any case, as the pump warms up and gets much hotter, the leaks often disappear. That's about it for this episode. What I'm going to do is stop talking and just let you watch the steam test. So far, everything's looking good. Dave's just pumped some water into the boiler using the hand pump, and John is checking the injector. The fire's looking good and it's ready to go. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.